children are our future, but does this mean that we should have as many as we want? Today, I will talk about how fertility rate affects important economic factors. Let me give you a brief introduction on fertility rates. It stands for the number of children per woman. It used to be common for a woman to conceive more than five children. Was this good or was this bad for the economy? Let me show you with some gap minor graphs where we compare fertility to time, GDP, literacy, and HDI. So this graph shows the world average of children per woman. We can see that the, this number has decreased from 5.5 in 1960 to 2.8 in 2012. There are several reasons for this number decreasing, such as the contraception techniques, the government regulations. We have a good example in China, where in around the 1970s, they put a limit on the amount of children you could have, which was one. And people got more aware about the issue. So we have just seen how fertility rate uh, has changed over time. But let's have a look how fertility rate has affected the GDP. This graph shows the relationship between children per woman and the income per person. First we can see that European countries start earning more and having less children. Then the rest of the world slowly follows and in 2015 we can see a clear correlation between the number of children per woman and the income per capita. But I can't understand does this really mean that less children means a better economy? No, luckily that is not the case. It is just an issue of money. Parents will be able to send their children to school when they only have two children instead of eight to provide for. The next graph that we're going to look at shows a correlation between the fertility rate and the literacy rate. Does every child living in a large family have the opportunity of going to school? Does the number of children per woman affect the number of children going to school? As we can see in this graph, less children per woman means a better literacy rate. So we can assume that countries that start to have less children per woman have a higher education in their country compared to the other ones that still tend to have more children. I think I understand. Does it mean that less children means higher literacy and higher GDP? Well, you're getting the gist of it, but it does of course not mean that we should not have any more children, just that we should not have eight per woman. The next graph we're going to look at shows the relationship between the children per woman and the HDI indicator. The HDI stands for Human Development Index and shows health, life expectancy, wealth and education. As we can see in this graph, less children per woman means a higher HDI. Countries that started to have less children per woman have also started to have a higher HDI, which means a better health, life expectancy, wealth and education. So, what does this all mean? It means that a high fertility rate has a direct impact on the prosperity of a country. Therefore, women should not have a large amount of children, but a regular amount, which is, at this point in time, around two children per woman. So the graphs we just saw, uh, they all show that a high fertility rate is not good for an economy. So, what, what can we do about this? The main way, and the most popular one, to reduce fertility rates is education and to let people know the effects of having large families. During this video alone, around a thousand babies were born around the world. And a very important proportion of these babies will live under very bad conditions. In this video, we have compared fertility rate to a number of factors. So, what can we derive from what we've seen in the past four minutes? First of all, we can see that health might decrease due to large families. So will literacy rate and so will GDP.